All right, so how are we going to start this? Well, it's Monday night once again. What up, everybody? Welcome to the Living... What? My, to... I See, almost you're said... You're on the wrong show. Our Harry Scary Hangout intro. I say that in our sleep. Yeah. I take, mean, we say that so many times. Take two. Beep. Well, <laughs> it's Monday night again. Uh, welcome, everybody, to The, the Mummy, Mummy and, and the, the Monkeys. monkeys. Oh. Yeah, so you got me saying it. <laughs> Darn it. Take three. <laughs> See how that works? <laughs> hey, everybody, it's Monday night again, and you're listening to Living, Living the, the Scream, Scream, the behind the scenes of The Mummy and the Monkey. That's right. And uh, you got uh, your host tonight, as you do every Monday night on Living the Scream. I'm Janet J, or Janet Takei. Yes. Also known as The Mummy. And I'm James, also known as The Monkey Grimgory. <laughs> we are uh, resellers. James is an artist, and we are also horror film hosts and uh, horror characters. Uh, I'm a mummy character. You're a monkey character. Yes, yeah, technically an ape, but because some people will point that out <laughs> that are super, you know, uh, specific about, uh, you know, what species Grim really is. But you know what? Some type knows? of monkey ape creature he, man. He could be a hybrid. He could be. You know, or maybe the uh, the vaccine uh, changes DNA from a, a, a ape to a monkey. You don't know. <laughs> Speaking of that, I did get mine on Friday, and it's Monday now. The what date is this? The nineteenth. Well, yeah. <laughs> but you're a two and through, so you're only one and not done. I'm yet. halfway there, so right. so far so good. And I'm fully, and uh, should be good in a little bit here. But you know, it's a it's a it's a personal choice to 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 do this, and um, you know, we're hoping for. Good things for the whole planet. Yeah, good vibes, good vibes. So um, the first half of this podcast, we talk about the reselling part of it for a little while. And then we talk about our characters and the Harry Scary Hangout show and things like that. Mm -hmm. Runs about an hour or so. So um, sit back, relax, grab a drink, grab a snack, whatever you want to do. Pick your toes, clip your nails. We don't care. Just uh, hope you get something out of this or just enjoy us Just wash your hands when you're done. Yeah, please, yeah, please, <laughs> before you serve us food or anything, for sure. All but, right, yeah. uh, so reselling, sales are kind of meh this week. Um, I had some decent sales over the weekend, but um, past, like, like overnight, didn't get really get anything so far, mm. and I have, I had two open returns, I did close a return. This is through eBay, again, eBay On, on the eBay yeah. store, yeah. And we mostly sell on eBay, so. Yeah, I do sell on... Every now and then I'll sell something like on Mercari, or maybe I'll put something on Facebook Marketplace, but it's few and far between. My my bestie with reselling is eBay. Mm. And um, I was just frustrated, though, because I actually purchased something on eBay so I can test out some items I wanted to sell. So we did a private pick with a local friend of ours, and I, I paid 100 bucks. For a, a Sega Dreamcast, Ooh. two controllers, Ooh. and then the little um, memory card thingy that goes into the controller screen, mm -hmm. and then a bunch of games. And some of those games are like 25 to 50 bucks. I mean, and, and so, that system, if it's good in working order, could be like 80 bucks. So I bought an HD converter. Um, where you can hook up the Sega Dreamcast to your HD television. And the one end is has the HDMI port, the other end goes into the system. And I bought this on eBay from another eBay seller, and it didn't work. So I'm disappointed. <laughs> Very disappointed. So I'm sending that back. But I was upset about the, the way the return label is on there. You're upset about the whole thing. Yeah, sounds the whole like, thing was annoying. Sounds like a, yeah, well. And it's in the grand scheme of things, it's not a big deal, but it's annoying. So eBay people, yeah, don't sell me broken things. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Well, I just want to make sure you're done. I'm you're, done. You're completed your thoughts and everything's out there. I, okay, I guess God for forbid. now. Yeah. I guess for now. Well, what, um, what did you want to talk? Uh, I just want to. I'm listening to what you sold over the over the. You know what, what you thought was either a good thing or a bad thing that you had go down this week, as far as sales go. I mean, I if, had a good week. Oh, that's good. a decent week. You know, could it be could always be better. Could Any be like interesting uh, sales you want to talk about? Heck yeah! Um, I uh, sold a, uh, <laughs> I sold a just overnight. I sold a, um, and I already packed them up. I, uh, it, it's, a, like a imagine a pug, like a 
pug dog, right, a head of mm -hmm. that. And uh, we showed on one of our videos that we posted on uh, one of our uh, excursions to the Honey Hole, which is a local Goodwill that we find a lot of good stuff at, obviously. Um, there were, it's basically a dog head that was sculpted out of paper mache, sort of, like this like, like clothy paper type stuff. And it's an artist that does it. We, matter of fact, we saw another one of his clocks at a different thrift store not too long ago, but someone else grabbed it. It was a full, almost a full-size dog clock where the tongue moves back and forth and where the whiskers would be would be where that minute and second hands are or the minute and hour hands are. But this was just the head of a pug and the tongue would move back and forth as the mechanism ticks. Now, it doesn't. It didn't work. And I obviously, I put that in the listing that it doesn't work. Um, you could probably swap that mechanism out if you're careful with it because it was actually um, implanted inside the mouth behind the snout. It was really, I don't know how they did that. They must have did it through the back. But anyway. But don't they make at craft stores? Yeah, a replacement Those pieces. little clock pieces and parts yeah. to like make your own clocks? You can replace. It could totally okay. be replaced. It just needs a little bit of, you know, time. But my point is that, that I pointed it out and it doesn't work. But um, I just took a shot since I didn't have, I couldn't find anything like com comparable to it. There were other pieces like it on eBay and they're all over the place. So I put 125 on it. And uh, it sold for 125. Oh, that's good. And uh, it's, I, I had people like hitting me up wanting to buy it, and I had uh, free shipping on it. And I had people hitting me up to want to, you know, get it for 60 bucks plus free shipping, things like that. And I just, I, you know, I countered a little higher, but not, but not over 100, and, and, and they weren't biting. So I just did what I did a lot of times. 125 bucks went for, it. and just sat it out because I knew it was so strange and, and different and a one of a kind thing that if somebody really wants it, they'll buy it, and they did. And the other cool thing I sold, it's a really super rare CD by a band called Joy, J-O-Y. And the name of the CD was The Best of Joy. And we listened to a little bit of it a while back. It was from the like the late 80s, I believe, if not early 90s. And um, it's a band, like a new wave band. And the, the music was very, you know, techno-y and... Uh, I can't find it. I couldn't find anything on the band at all. Something came up on Discogs, which is a a um, a site where you know they have just about everything recorded on vinyl or DVD or or on a rock, you know, on Discogs. And when I, I it did come up on Discogs, but usually they have things that you know you can buy if someone has they have wish lists that like people are looking for this uh, album or CD, and then they have people that have it for sale. This one was listed as you know not allowed to be sold on Discogs, like you. Oh, Oh, we just sold something. I made a sale live on the podcast. Um, Godzilla, a little figurine for seventeen ninety nine shipped. Bingo. All right. So, but this this CD, I couldn't find anything on it as far as how much they went for it. But I did know it was something that you couldn't sell even on Discogs. It was like, you know, unable to sell on this site. Uh, but I put it up for one hundred and forty, and it went for one hundred and forty bucks. That's amazing. And was that yeah. one you found at the Honey Hole? Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. That was a savers find. Actually, I think I might have had it up for two hundred originally, and I took a hundred and forty dollar best offer. Which wow. again, that's good for a CD. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, if you find the right thing of anything, right? I mean, it, yeah. it can sell. So those were my so two you best had, sales. You had some very unique sales. Yeah, and they were they didn't sell right away, but they've sold within a few months. And and a lot of my <laughs> stuff that I sell, it's like little collectible toys, or it's yeah. um, more basic like shoes that are that look brand new, or like purses, a, you sell a purse, or like swimming, uh, you know, swimwear, mm -hmm. because it's you know spring heading into summer. So I, I've been selling a few swimwear pieces. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean just some basic stuff, and then little figurines. Yeah, you definitely branch out more into the apparel and wearable stuff. I, I have some of that stuff too, but it's mostly t-shirts and hats and, and that's really it. I don't get into the shoes or, uh, yeah. or, uh, purses. I don't mind selling clothing online, but it is more of a challenge because it has to look, well, with any item, it has to look good for the picture, but with clothing, like obviously if there's lint on it or if it's wrinkled, it's going to look bad in the picture if it has wrinkles um, it's that's how better. Wear, that's how I wear all my clothes. What's wrong with that? <laughs> it's better to have it like on a mannequin or hanging up and, you know, you have to make sure the lighting's just right for mm. it. So it's a little more of a challenge and some clothing pieces you need more room, like if it's a dress or a pair of pants. Um, but yeah, I mean, it does sell. It's just a little more effort and you have to measure everything out. It's a lot more effort. Yeah. A lot more. But, um, yeah, in speaking of that, I did end up purchasing a lot of clothing lately to put online. And I there's so much I need to list right now. 
<laughs> and right. it's uh it's just been hectic lately just yeah. you know so some personal family stuff yeah. nothing life, yeah. life happens life happens life happens you got to take care of things and uh, yeah family first oh yeah and then um you know everything else and it, it, but it, it, i think you know everyone obviously has things going on all the time it's it's yeah part of being alive or sometimes you have to put <laughs> something else on pause and pay attention to another matter and then go back to it. Re, that's called being reprioritizing things, of course, obviously. Yeah. But that, but see, that is the night, that is the blessing, that is a good thing, the cool thing about doing what we do. Yeah. our own bosses. Yep. There oh. you go. You're hearing this all in real time. They paid for it. Okay. So I had one cha-ching for the sale, one cha-ching that, they, that the payment went through. See, I, they should be different sounds if you ask me. You know, that way you know. Yeah. Who, how could you tell? Well, I, I could tell by how many chichingies go through. If it's two chichingies, just then like, I know. Just like an alarm clock or like a or like a uh, a bell clock, but oh, there's one and then two. Yeah. So but, if if I get one chichingie, that's like an offer, or that it's sold but they didn't pay yet. But it doesn't ching twice. And then in a row. and then it, then the the second chichingie, I know they paid for it. But it could have been a whole new item that's sold. No, I I I. I well, it could be. I know it wasn't in this case. I need differentiation, eBay. Just, saying, <laughs> just letting you know. I would help me out. A different tone or a different sound. But anyway, going back to real quick to finish my thought about um, being uh, your own boss. No matter what you do, it doesn't have to be reselling. It could be like, in my case, graphic design or, or illustration. I could do that just as my own job. But uh, I like doing reselling to pad. Like, mm -hmm. I have a couple different things going on. I but I love going out and finding stuff and selling it. But it's nice to be able to have that kind of versatility. Right. To be able to take time off to do things. Right. So, like, you know, like if we this. have to help one of our moms or help a friend or something, we can take that afternoon to go do what we need to do. Yep. And then go back to our work when we get back or yep. later that day or the next day. Just as long as it gets done. It yeah. Doesn't have, you know, like, as long as the work will get done. Because when you punch a clock, no matter what shift it is, I mean, that, those are the hours you're locked into. And even sometimes expected to, to work overtime or continue working at it when you go home. I mean, because you have a deadline. Even though we have kind of deadlines too. Well, um, with your this, freelance, you have I deadlines. Have deadlines yeah. so with eBay, little... I have deadlines. If something sells, I have to ship it out within forty-eight hours. We all do. Anyone that does eBay, yes, too. Yes. yes. And so, when I list something, it has to. You know, you just want to make it as accurate as possible. But it is possible to stay up an extra hour and, and pack those orders or whatever it might be. Yeah. Sometimes I will stay up late and, and do some listings. Or wake or, up a little early. Or pack up orders. Or I go to bed early, I go to bed earlier one day and get up early the next and just start working. I mean, because today I had, uh, well, last night I helped uh, my mom out with some stuff because she had some stuff, that uh, procedure she had to get done today. Uh, you know, she's okay at the hospital and all that. But I had to make sure she was okay throughout the night and... At the same time, I had orders to pack and actually some freelance art to send in to get approvals for stuff. So, you know, I spent all night making sure mom was okay and, and, and attending to her. And then as I woke up this morning early, finished up the freelance stuff, sent it off. Um, a couple things, actually, for two different clients. And then I packed my orders and um, got those out. And they were taken away later on today and even took the garbage out. Stuff like that. Yeah. You know, the essentials. And then, and then took later, mom to her appointment. And then later I brought the cans in for you. Yeah. And <laughs> so it all it all gets done. I mean, there's there's time. You just have to obviously it's, it's, manage it on your own. Right. It's it's trying to budget your time to try to get realistically we can't obviously get everything done, but what can we get done? Let's try to do a handful of things. Well, sure. I mean, or have a little list of things. Yeah, don't drive yourself crazy. Yeah trying to get because you'll never get every whatever that might mean so you just prioritize i mean just right like and when you're self-employed or when you're working at home that's <sighs> what you have to do you just do and we i was yeah. talking with someone the other day who said that they prefer going into an office to work they don't like working from home yeah. because it feels too you know they're at home they're feeling too comfortable they like actually stepping out of the home to go do their work so th that's them. an interesting way of looking at it. Yeah, I've, I had the same conversation with my dentist uh, when I went and got some work done the other day um, that came up. Because they usually they ask you when you go to the dentist, I know, for well, they do at mine. They go, where, where are you going after this? They ask you, like, in other words, you know, uh, I, I guess to know how, you know, it, it, what condition you're going to be in. Or, you know, or just, just making small talk, they were, too. They were just filling. I mean, not, I wasn't getting any major surgery, you know, I went to a dentist, not, a, not an endodontist. So. Yeah. Um. Anyway. But, you know, so 
Well, I, I lost but, my but, but he said that he couldn't work from home. Well, oh, obviously he's a dentist. Going, yeah, he so, couldn't. So that came but... up. The, the whole thing about, you know, she go, she's like, yeah. I, she goes, I tried something like that a long time ago. I don't know what she was doing. But um, it might not have been uh, dental related. But she that she tried to work from uh, from home and it didn't work. And it was hard. She likes going into a place. Yeah, so. there are people that actually like going into work. And there are days sometimes where I miss... Like, because I had the store for three years and it was nice to get out sometimes and talk with people, you know, but at the the same time, it is nice to be like, you know, it's okay. I could just work here. Um, you know, I'm cool working, you know, um, so yeah, I could see both sides of that really. Absolutely. And I, and I had no problem working for people in the past. I still, you know, and I, I don't, I can't rule out that I never would again. I love being part of a team. I love the creative process. I miss all the brainstorming, you know, for particular products and things like that and stuff that I, you know, toys. I used to work in the toy industry, um, greeting card industry and things like that and uh, all kinds of like, you know, party gifts and favors. So I miss all of that kind of stuff, but I can apply the same thing to, you know, what we do with Mummy the Monkey mm-hmm. and other st- other projects we have going on uh, surrounding that. So I still get that creative outlet with that. And that's why I really like doing our show is because it gives me that creative outlet, Mm -hmm. you know, that's just all of our, just our ideas that we get to work on that, you know, don't belong to anyone else. It's just our stuff. But, um, well, when we go out sourcing, technically we're working because we're looking for, you know, items that can sell online. So that's like our way of getting out and like being out in the public. (laughs) The The only thing that I think that one of the things that I that that is are different from working in a place with you know where there's all the rules and regulations um because if we if we worked in an office together the same things could still happen but uh you know in an office you usually uh you know you're, you're really like monitored and you know you know when you should or shouldn't get up and talk to your fellow friends and stuff and, and workmates there's times you can do that throughout the day when you, know, you get up and after a few hours of sitting, staring at the computer, you get up and go talk to your buddy in the cubicle next door or whatever, but you don't make a big habit of it. But um, but I would say like distractions are the hard thing here, you know, between the cats and then sometimes being asked random questions by, you know. By me. No offense, you. It's <laughs> like, well, wh- what if I was at work? Would you just walk in and ask me how this dress looks? I mean, I'm kind of in the middle of... <laughs> I love you in the whole nine, but it's just... Uh, it or just, look what the cat did. Yeah, it's like, oh, I just fed these squirrels. It's like, that's great. And I'm really trying to get this done here. You know, and Sorry. It's okay. But it's but that would not happen usually at a place where, you know, every, every, you know, where your boss is like in the next cubicle or, you know, you look like you're working or, you know, <laughs> if we talk for a few minutes in this cubicle, we'll just keep it for a few minutes and I can get back to my cubicle. But um, yeah, I mean, but that'd be the only thing. But then again, I think about, but but what I what I think about is a grand scheme of things. Like, I don't have it hanging over my head, my job hanging over my head. Like, it, you know, the company has a bad quarter, and the way that they deal with, uh, you know, uh, getting the numbers back is chopping some heads. I don't have to worry about that. Right. Know? Yeah, and we just have to remind each other that. Just, yeah. um, That's good. Don't touch anything. That yeah, we have to give each other space if we're both. Like if I'm working on something and need some quiet time or need to not be bothered or if you don't want me to bother you while you're working, we just have to remind each other like, hey, I'm working. There, all I can write. Yeah. Because sometimes it is like, oh, this funny thing happened or I found this funny thing. Let me show you. If, or or this happened and it's like, I'm working. Please right. tell yeah. me later. And I've done it to you too. Yeah. The, we but, both do it to each other. All so. the, and whenever we can. <laughs> When time permits, when, it, when, it, when it's the uh, anyway. Anyways, there, there's a, there, there's something you could reference if anyone knows the Shining, the original Shining movie with Jack Nicholson. There's a part in that movie where his wife Shelley, Shelley played by Shelley Duvall, comes up to him while he's writing because he's a writer in the movie, and he's in front of his typewriter and he goes off on her uh, because she comes in and asks him about I forget what she asks him about, like something that has nothing to do with his work, and he just lays into her. Yeah. <laughs> And it could be a guy to a girl, a girl to a guy, a girl to a girl. It could go guy. either way. No, it's, I'm not talking yeah. about mansplaining. No, I'm no. I'm talking about... It's, it's about like you're trying to work on a project. Well, yeah. yeah. When I'm working, I'm working. It's and, not and about... you're you know. trying to finish it and you can't well, yeah. be distracted at that time. Well, it would be nice. You know, understand yeah. that I am sitting here working for a reason. See, and that's another... Like some people, if, if they don't 
feel like they can get work done at home, like the ones that feel like they have yeah. to step out. I think maybe because of distractions, maybe they feel like they can stay more focused if they're out of the house. Yeah. So yeah. I do understand that, but yeah. I do like knowing that I can change my schedule on a daily basis and I right. don't have to be at an office or at a place of business during a certain time. So what it is. I can make my own time. So what it is, it's just a trade-off. It's In other words, you could either have someone else manage your time. Yes. And control what you do. for Basically decide whether or not you should be there at any given time, no matter how good of a, a worker you were, how long you've been with the company. Mm -hmm. When they have to choose, like, you know, Survivor or something, they have to pick, like, I got to let two people go and there's 10 people here. Who am I going to let go? That's, you know, that's... It, it's a fact of, of corporate life, right? Um, but here, I mean, it, there are other obstacles, but you don't have that hanging over your head. Right. You know? And there are times when it's like, I have to sign out of Facebook. I have to not look at my phone for a while right. to, in order to get some stuff done. You're your own project manager. Yes, because it's like, okay, I'm getting too many messages. It's too much, you know, where I just take a break from it for like maybe that afternoon or something. Yeah. Right, and, that's, and and you just you have to to, yeah. to get things done. Sometimes you gotta gotta get it done. And all this might be like duh and common sense stuff, but but you know we're just kind of relaying to you what we've kind of what we're discovering over the last what the three years we've been doing this now since 2018. I've been doing it for 20 since that almost month. four years for me. Yeah, so three for me, four for you on mm -hmm. our own. Um, and th you know, like I said, I don't feel any different as far as. And I, well, and even, that's not a bad thing either. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Well, and even when I was working full time for companies, I would come home and the little free time I did have, I would have to try to figure out how to get some stuff done. Like, okay, I got to do laundry, got to do housework, got, got to film oh, for funny. one of our videos and shows. It was like, how can I juggle all this in so many hours? Because I have to get up and do it all over again <laughs> and, at the office. And for people with children, that's got to be a lot worse. Can't, I, can't I, can't even, I can't even imagine. Right. It's, it's very difficult. So, you know, you got to figure out, I say people just figure out what you what you can and can't handle. And if you have the wherewithal to, to do your own thing, no matter what it is, you know, on your own, be self-employed. I'd say go for it. Give it a shot. Um, but if, you know, or if working for someone else and working with someone else is what you prefer to do, that's good, too. There's no wrong. Yeah, not everyone is cut out to be self-employed or to be an entrepreneur or to run a business. Some people like working for places and to just do their tasks and just clock out. And then when they get home, they're done. Like, See, they don't have that... Like, like with us, we'll get eBay messages all hours and you'll get freelance work, you know, mm -hmm. and, and messages from people at all hours. See, so what I liked about working when I did, okay, I worked in the creative field. So, um, and still do, but when I worked, you know, for, for places, I got to be a part of a big, a bigger thing, right? I was a, a, I didn't feel like a cog at all. I felt like a contributor and it was so much fun because I knew ultimately Everything I worked, the, the part I worked on would be represented on the shelf or whatever, you know, in the store. And um, and I and I could be proud that I was part of that. It was a lot of fun. You know, I had a good time uh, contributing. And I, like I said, I like the camaraderie. I, I like the brain. I made some good friends. Well, I'll say friendships. I made. I haven't heard from any of these people <laughs> since I, I got let go, which is another whole subject. But, um, and strange, because we are doing stuff that's not kind of on TV and like no one's even said, hey, cool dude you know it's just sort of eh. maybe they're but like fine. still at that same place loathing it maybe and but, like know. oh darn he's but i, I don't you need, know but i don't need it either i don't need <laughs> to be told i'm, I'm you know but anyway but yeah. i just think it's strange but it's okay but i don't know well there's there's been places where i worked at where then you were friendly with people there but then after you leave you just lose contact well, you, you don't talk as much well you had even the otter thing happen to play we uh, tell the story oh, about yeah. the place you so, worked at so Facebook. i was working part-time for a little office place um when i was just getting the shop running kind of like as an in-between thing and then uh later on i did uh leave and gave them my my notice but um a lot of the people there were really nice and i got along with them and I remember, you know, I left on good terms, but um, there were some ladies there that I was friends with on social media. And then, 
like maybe a year after I left, I looked them up to see how they were doing because I thought, well, I haven't talked with so-and-so in a while. How is she doing? And I tried looking them up and they were like nowhere to be found. Hmm. So I'm like, and then there were like Snub. two other names I looked up, nowhere to be found. So I'm like, did they all block me? Snub. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. But, and then I'm like, well, what did I do? I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what goes on in people's heads. I think the real answer for me, though, would be that everyone has their own lives and they have more. I mean, I'm obviously low on that. Pri- and I don't need to be. I'm just saying, I, I, I get it. I mean, because it, it's a two way street, too. I guess I could have reached out to them mm-hmm. and, and done the same thing. And that's I, why I thought, like, you know, a year went by. Maybe I should look them up and see how they're doing. Yeah. And, and then again, platforms like Facebook. If we're all on there, they can kind of check in and see how we're doing, and I and I how they're doing. Mm-hmm. And so there's not this constant like you know. You could um, see what people post, or you. But I think you know. it's nice to message people every now and then and say, "Hey, yeah. how's it going?" Sure. Well, well, not but not all. You know how many. But not like do we have? not right. all of the people because there's so many like acquaintances where I don't really know them personally. But I'm talking about like people you've worked with m- yeah. before. Yeah. You know where you're like, oh, how is. Todd doing? Well, How's so John so, yeah. doing? Yeah. You know, whatever. And I, and the I name, try to keep maybe. Tabs. There's a few people I still kind of keep in touch with. And that's all, you know, that really matters. But yeah, I mean, I do miss all of that. I do miss the, the you know, the, the, all of that, you know, the, the things that being a part of a big, uh, you know, um, project and, and, and seeing stuff come out and, and being proud of all that. But I mean, ultimately, it's just stuff. And, you know, you're just a you know, you just sometimes are, you are replaceable. You're a cog in the machine. Mm-hmm. And when you have people telling you that you should be happy that you have a job and that, you know, you know, it doesn't matter what's going on around here. Don't you should be, you know, that's not, that, that kind of sucks. All the I had, I had a store manager tell me that yeah, we all when I worked in retail as a retail manager, and this was around 2008 during the first, you know, that big recession. Mm-hmm. And there was talk of all these other Places closing, and he was telling us, "Oh, you guys should all be grateful you have jobs." Yeah, you know, and it's like, well, yeah, I'm grateful for our job, but we also want to be treated humanely. Right, right. This is supposed to be a you know a relationship here, working really, not you know, you know, you're lucky that we gave you this job. So, so when I hear stuff like that, it's just very like like talking down, you know, in my opinion. Then, then do you know my first and last name? They 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 should say, you know, thanks for you know coming in today. Thanks for helping out. We need all this work done. Um, You know, please please try to get it done. We appreciate you. Right, because right because the reason why that company's bottom line is getting met, met. is because of the work of all these people and you know and there's no way we're seeing anything close to what these CEOs are making that you're working for and that's fine that's not what I signed up for I signed up to get my paycheck mm-hmm. that we negotiated and I'll give you that and no more because when I was a department manager for, for um, a retail company I was nice with my employees and of course if there was something they didn't do I would question them about it like right. why wasn't this done you know I would it's it's a balance, you know, well, here's another... and you don't want to like just talk down to people all the time. That's and, not cool. And yeah, and without naming names or anything like that, I'll say the, the last couple of places I did work for, and it doesn't even matter. Um, there was this thing going on in in these industries where they were starting to do things, and they would call them hybrid positions. <laughs> but you need to get a hybrid paycheck. Yeah, where's my hybrid paycheck? Yeah, they, you you'd be doing. Oh, you get to you you have to do this this and this. It's like it, it, it's the job of four people. Yeah, literally, and you get one check. I remember in these same industries, these would be literally four different departments, and four different types of you know jobs and skill levels and things that you know like if you uh, like. like you know, Let's say there was an orange counter and a and an apples counter, and the orange counter would only count oranges, and the apple counter would only count apples. But they do these hybrid things where now the orange counter counts oranges and apples, but and then they eliminate the apple guy. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. Or, or they'll say, well, now you have to wear many hats. Oh, yeah, that means I'm doing the job of multiple people and you want me to do everything many hats one but the same page one yeah many hats one check and again it's fair is fair it's like yeah and the reason why these were different jobs because they had different skill levels and they took time now i have to do this stuff that i barely got done just that one thing i was doing that one specialty i had yeah and then where i got these other things i have to do and figure out how to fit them all in that same eight hour you know seven day a week i just right 
I unreachable know. expectations. Well, you should be happy. That's to have what a I job. would always call it. You should be happy to have a job. When I was working for these com- said companies, well, unsaid companies, <laughs> I'm not going to say names. But you should be happy that oh, you have yeah. a job. Be happy you have a job. Ugh. And we're happy that we have this job. <laughs> we happy that we, we're happy that we have this we podcast. Have. That's fun. It's good to vent, I guess. I don't know. I think we're just rambling. But... Now we're just rambling. Well, yeah. here's another thing with us. We don't fit neatly into a category um, when we... Is that... Is, are you calling me fat? Well, this... No, this oh. can lead into the <laughs> mummy and the monkey stuff, our okay. characters. So right. this is the other portion of the podcast. So we're YouTubers and we're... We, go live on facebook um on most friday nights where we host a cheesy b movie a classic horror film sci-fi all that um but then like we also show behind the scenes videos we do these podcasts um so we kind of show a little bit of everything about our lives it's not just like Mm -hmm. we're only doing a reselling video or we're only doing a horror themed video no Mm -hmm. we just we like to do whatever we want to do right um, Damn it. You're not just a freelance artist. You're also an entertainer. Da, 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 da. You're, <laughs> you're also a YouTuber, technically. I am. So, yeah, yeah. So um, we're oh, cool. We're wearing many hats, but it's because we choose to for ourselves. Right. And we're, we're not in like just one little category. And I noticed with some YouTubers, they'll only do one type of video well, that's fine which which is fine because it's probably better for the algorithms so they could boost their channel or whatever but we decided to just do what we wanted to do and have different playlists on mm. our our youtube and that could that could also be bad though too because i uh, so i think some youtubers were uh, playing around with trying different things and i think they some of them figured out it was too confusing for some of the viewers because they didn't know what they were watching or is this a reselling channel or is it my adventures on the road and occasionally resale. You know what I mean? It's like it can be, but that, but that, to me, that it, it's up to the to the uh, content provider, the YouTuber, to define all that and make it cohesive. Well, what I like about so a good example of doing whatever they want to do is Tucker Tucker Upper. Is yeah, that Tucker his Upper. channel? Yeah, Tucker Upper. Uh, him and his uh, wife. They're out of New Jersey and they resell, but they also have starred in independent horror films. And they make their own films. They too. make their own films. They um, do skateboarding videos, mm-hmm. travel videos, garbage picking videos, whatever they are interested in. So it's like yeah. they video everything. So it's like a reality show. It's kind of like a reality thing, and they yeah. have they have like over a hundred thousand subscribers. That's not nothing to sneeze at. Yeah, and we end up watching a lot of their videos. Absolutely, they're very entertaining. I, I I love the variety there, and I can hang with it because all right, they'll address some of the reselling stuff. Because who reset? Who does resale twenty four seven? I mean, you have other things you do with your life, and that's the cool thing about the reselling thing is that you can also show the lifestyle. Hey, we don't have to do those twenty four seven. Here we're going out in the morning, picking up some trash on the street or whatever we're doing or picking up uh, some stuff we got from a guy at an auction. And then we're going to go get the lunch and then we're going to go do this other stuff we like to do and then go back and list it all. Yeah. You know, you can show that kind of like what you can and can't, you know, not can't do, but what you, how you modified your uh, self-employment, i.e. doing, res- you know, specifically doing resale or being resale or whatever it is that you do. But you can, you know, at least people could see that. That's what you could. That's what could be accomplished when you are um, self-employed and like the uh, podcast you listen that we both listen to, but that you just you found for us. Oh, Scavenger Life. Yeah, yeah, I really like that podcast. So they, uh, you know, they resell, but then they're using the money from reselling and they're investing in property. They have Airbnb rentals. They also invested in a commercial building that's going to have a coffee shop and then some office space for rent. So they're using the the eBay stuff to pursue other things so they talk about all these aspects in their uh career you know in in their business ventures and they do no video it's all audio the podcast yeah well they have some videos on their youtube but yeah the podcast is all audio um so with the mummy and the monkey um we're really happy to uh have a friend that works for a public access cable channel in kalamazoo michigan so they uh, our buddy Kenji, thank you so much, Kenji. He simulcasts our Friday live stream on Facebook to Roku, to Apple TV, and to Amazon Fire Stick. 
and the channel is Public Media Network. And then during the week at midnight, they replay our past shows. Mm. So I just think that's so awesome. And we get people now saying that they watch us on their big TV because of that. Ooh, we made it to the big TV. We made it to the big TV. Oh. Not just a, a tablet or a laptop. Or yeah. someone's phone or so- smartphone. I mean, we're on the big TV, baby. <laughs> but then we have people who say they watch us on the big TV, but then they comment using their phone. Right, and that's fine. That's like those newscasters when they're on those uh, plugged in... I don't know, probably every news uh, station has where they have the, the guy standing there with like, the iPad and the phone and the every, you know... He's like commenting on daily events and they read emails from viewers and but yeah, so everybody's like this like these cyborgs, right? With all these different uh gadgets and gizmos uh, and who's it's and what's it's, it's you youngins and so your technology. However, yeah, however you need to work it out to to to, to, to hey, get and get your money's worth, you're paying an arm and a leg for these things. Yeah, might, might as well, well use, use them. them. But um hey, pinch poke owe me a coke. Um but yeah. So we're happy about that. The simulcasting thing is fairly new. Um, we've been doing that for the past couple weeks. And uh, so far, so good. Mm-hmm. Um, there was like a tiny bit of a lag, maybe a few seconds, but it's not too bad. Oh, my. From what I've heard, people are liking it. And good. we're getting some more Michiganders watching. Huh. So that's nice. So yeah. thank you, Kalamazoo. Now, what did our <laughs> what did our last episode just get on Facebook views? Last week's episode is now at eight thousand two hundred views. Wow, that and, which no. is good because nor well normally our shows get between like twenty five hundred to eight thousand views, and eight thousand is on the high end. Super. So not all episodes get eight thousand views, but this one did. Mm-hmm. So. We're really happy about that. Very grateful. It looks like we're getting more viewers. Like it's starting to pick up that that watch the show throughout the whole show and not just kind of check it out for a few minutes and then and, and, and tap out. Yeah, most people will watch it for a good chunk, mm-hmm. which is nice. That's good to know. And now that the stream is running better, that we've you know we've upgraded everything last fall. Not one. Um, we we upgraded the webcam, so we've got that going. Um, we had someone give us tech advice about possibly using two cameras and switching back and forth and getting some other devices so we're not clicking so much on the screen. So we might look into that. So we're also looking into independent movies. Mm. So uh, we've been, yeah. we had some filmmakers message us recently and we're excited about that. So we have a lot of indie movies to watch to plan for future episodes of the Harry Scary Hangout. hmm and one of them is in California, and uh, he found us online through Facebook and Instagram. So that's pretty cool. That is neat. Yeah. And then uh, another one we found by accident <laughs> at the flea market. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, I think we started talking about this last on last episode, but we wanted to save the story for this episode. Yeah. So let's tell the story. So uh, doing my usual thing, I was on my own solo at a, at a flea market a few weeks ago and uh looking through the dvds and the vhs as i always do to try to find some you know cool stuff whether it's for a show or not i don't know but you know i just like to look anyway and i found this um movie in a in a slim dvd case called bigfoot that's what it's just titled bigfoot and it looked like an independent movie and um i'm like okay this is pretty cool and but you know there's a lot of movies called bigfoot about bigfoot so I was, and it looked like it could have been like something that was sold at Dollar Tree or a dollar store. I didn't really investigate it too much, so I just uh, picked it up, you know, for a buck, I think it was. And, you know, I watch it later because, again, we have piles of this kind of stuff, and that's the kind of stuff that we like to watch. And strangely enough, I mean, as we're watching this thing, it was actually not strangely enough that it was good, but as we watch this thing, um, Janet just says, hey, what, you know, where, where, you know, I wonder who made this. And you started recognizing. Um, do we recognize a name on there? You knew you figured out it was a local person that made it. Well, I was reading the back of the case, and it it said like you know Northeast Ohio. Mm-hmm. I didn't. And even I'm like, it. oh, this was filmed in Ohio. And then I looked up the production company, and I found the person who directed it. Mm-hmm. And I thought, well, you know what? I should message them and uh, just let them know we liked the movie. Right. And you found them on Facebook. And I found them on Facebook. And we had a nice conversation on the phone uh, last week. Well, here, here. Where, because uh, I was hoping we could get permission to play this movie in the future. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a little bit more of like, I like the, I like the sort of the yarn, you know. Oh, so I just like to tell everything like it is. You, you are. 
you looked him up on Facebook. We yes. sat around, we we're watching the movie, and then you're like, oh, he wrote back. Oh, yeah. I was excited that he wrote back, and he's like, hey, give me a call. And you're like, oh, should I call him now? I'm like, I guess now. <laughs> no, we weren't even done watching the movie yet. Well, we were almost done watching the movie. There were like some extras we still needed oh, we, to watch. We watched the movie and then, right? We maybe. watched the movie and then decided to talk That's to him. That's right. I was just surprised that he wrote back so fast. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, worst case scenario, he, I mean, I could ask. And then worst case scenario, he could tell me no or just not message me back me and alone, ghost yeah. me. But <laughs> yeah, but he was very nice and, and nice to talk to. He had some great stories because I guess he... Um, is in Ohio now, but used to work in California and live out there. Um, and yeah, the movie is, is actually very well put together for being an independent film. And the Bigfoot creature looks amazing. It's really cool. So he did give us permission to play the movie. Mm. So uh, we're going to have to pick uh, when we're going to do that. <laughs> Yeah, because this is uh, interesting. I mean, um, this this it's kind of a not a, that there's a game changer because a lot of horror hosts have shown independent movies, but it's nice to be able to get to the point where when when we ask something like this, usually it goes through. You know, people are like, "Sure, that's cool." Yeah, you know, they just don't go, "Who are you guys?" And uh, what are you it's, it's we have a little bit of a little bit of cred. You know, we're working on it, but it's building up. And yeah. people seem to be interested in being on our show, you know, having our stuff shown. And I'm really excited to say we booked our first appearance mm. for, uh, we're booking appearances for October. Wow. Through the, uh, That's soon, huh? through the library system <laughs> around here. Yeah, yeah. We'll it, and we don't books. even know if it will be an in-person appearance or if it yeah. will be a Zoom appearance. But we told them we'd be good either way. Right. Because by that point, I think, you know, it should be a little bit better. We'll see. I mean, and that's all depends on uh, and everybody out there. But we'll, you know, put it, not, no, no pressure. Mm -hmm. But we're excited about <laughs> it. We're just happy someone contacted us saying, hey, you know, do you want to, you know, yeah. make an appearance at, at the, the blah, blah, blah library? Yeah. And I'm we, not going to say the library yet. We've done is we, the same one, right? We've been to or is it a different uh, location? It's the same location that yeah. we were at a few years ago. Yeah, And we, we did a little bit of a presentation there. And if we do the same thing, I think we should Spice it up a little bit and kind of re yeah. rewrite some of it. We'll do something a little, yeah, we'll a little shake, different. Yeah, we'll have to find a way to make it a little more unique or different. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we're, we're we're just like okay, good. There's some good stuff coming through, and we have more indie films to watch and screen. The only thing is with with some of the indie movies, and we love independent film. We like blood and guts and movies, mm -hmm. um, but. <laughs> some of them have adult Oof. content where yeah. I don't know if we could because when we host movies we try to keep it for most ages to watch yeah. um, we don't really show a lot of excessive gore we don't show nudity because you know we just don't we'll put, and you can't really do anything I mean well, Facebook won't let you show it and you know and, and, and we have we have people that watch it with their kids and yeah. stuff so we try to keep it like you know around PG 13 ish well Sven Gulli appropriate Elvira appropriate you know yeah. whatever they were allowed to get away with on on their TV you know some I mean the, the closer we come to anything adults like any kind of double entendre or you know or, or you know or uh, humor innu like that innuendo and that's yeah. about it but but as far, as far as visual nudity and, and, and gore and stuff like that, I mean, it's very, you know, no nudity and, and the gore is limited usually. Mm -hmm. um, and swearing, you know, again, we that's just fun we to try think to, about. So. Yeah. And, and we, there might be a, a word or two here and there, but we try to limit that. You know, and, and to me, what, what that does, too, is that it, uh, especially if it's a if it's an independent movie, um, we could say, hey, if you want to see this thing uncut, go patronize the, the, the person that made it, you know, buy the DVD off of them. You know, oh yeah, forget, get that off. <laughs> um, that's okay. I, I like that. It's, it sounds like we're doing stuff, and we are. We're, we're we have the TV on in the background. I changed the to channel to something that yeah. we don't want to watch, uh, or even run in the background. But <clears throat> anyway, so um, that that they could actually buy the DVD or rent it or whatever to see or, or rent the movie, whether it's digital, however the person that made it. Um, has it available for purchase or whatever? Mm -hmm. And they could see the whole thing there, uncut, you know. And, and but it's a way for us to sort of preview it or showcase it. Yeah, we're just trying to figure out how we can collab with um, some of the indie filmmakers that put things, um, put content out there that ha are for really a more, a, a more mature audience. Mm -hmm. 
So maybe we could play, yeah, maybe an edited version of their film if they're okay with that. Some, right. some of them are, some aren't. Yeah, there, there was someone we were talking to a little bit ago that was not interested at all in, in any of the film being um, even maybe even just segmented into four segments. Like yeah, they, he, they, they he, this, this person was very like... And that's fine. Very uh, particular about what they wanted and... I think at the time it just didn't work for us. And one of the best conversations I think we had was with the guy that we did Dark Matter, the director for that movie. Oh, yeah. He was really cool and he was a little, he was everything that you would expect as far as a, um, you know, from where we're coming from as far as uh, being an independent show and kind of new on the scene and not as well known. He was very, he questioned a lot of stuff. He was just wondering what we were right and make sure we were legit and not some kids in our basement, which we kind of are. <laughs> um, just doing a show for, for fun, which we kind of are. But it was, and then when we got down to the whole thing about editing, I said, "Well, we're going to have to edit it for time, probably, if or not for time, but we're going to have to cut it down so we can host in between it. So we can host in and between." He thought about it for a while, and he got, and he then he figured out it was it would be the right thing to do. But it, but I liked that. It but was that very... same person also remembers like Big Chuck and Little John. Yes, Big Chuck was even in that movie. That's true. So, so he understood when what we, we had were, to do. yeah, when you were explaining to him that it was in segments, then he had to think, oh, well, yeah, kind of like when Big Chuck and Little John would take a break from the movie and they would be sitting, you know, you'd see them talking with you. And we did that thing too, where it would run for a certain amount of time. We'd leave it up, I should say, and then we would take the, and we did. We took the episode down after whenever he. I think we on. had it up for a week and then we took it down yeah. because he um, is still selling the DVD, and I think he wanted to try to get get it on blu-ray at some point or now the sad thing is that we were doing this during the time whenever when our internet was wasn't so as good so maybe we could redo so maybe it. we could do it again later on i have you know i have the the, the, the edit i have it already still, yeah you know in, in our archives but we'd have to ask him again that could be good that yeah be not good. everyone has seen that one because we did pick up a lot of new followers since last fall and that one's done really really well too yeah so yeah maybe we can hit them up i mean maybe. if we're gonna repeat something that's good <laughs> and, and local why not yeah <clears throat> but uh, so okay. we're trying to figure out how to do it differently so we're not showing the same old public domain movies and even though those old public domain movies are great it's like how can we um put our own style put our own uh and our own mark. Make our own mark in horror hosting. <laughs> well, I, okay. There are a lot of other horror hosts that do the exact same thing we do as far as format. They do. I mean, there, there's a lot of them, and they have been doing it for years, um, that do a combination of you know independent films and then mm -hmm. the, the B movies. But not everyone does the sound effects like you do. No, that's different. And I'm not and just saying that because I'm with you. I'm saying it because people really think no, it's funny. And and that's again that's an homage to the ghoul and if we had to stop doing that I think our show is still good enough and interesting enough I should say that you don't need that part of it, but that's just something fun for me to do and it reminds me of the stuff I used to watch on the ghoul. But that's another thing we do too. We we usually don't tamper with the independent films. So th those stand as they are, we just... That's true. Yeah, for indie movies, we don't normally add sound effects. There was just one we did. But it would be kind of funny to take one that has more mature content to do some creative editing mm -hmm. and do some funny sound effects to it. Maybe. But it would be a, it would be a more work for you. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I could do it. I just don't... Yeah, I mean, it's a break for me, too. I, and I, I like the independent mm -hmm. film... Um, uh, format as as the art of it, and don't want to really mar the the director or the writer's vision of what they had. Uh, it's bad enough that we have to chop it up like for TV and host it, but um, but that's what we do. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I I I don't know that showing just independent movies or a mixture of is any different. I'm just saying because I have I mean, watch all this stuff and I see people do the same thing, but well, no, I mean. Yeah, in some ways, but not others. So that's what, that's my whole point. It was like, how can we put at our own, make, to make it ours, you know, to, to give it a different style, a different feel Yeah. than the traditional, um, okay, here's the movie, here's the factoids, movie's over, have a good night. Well, we don't do that anyway. I yeah. Mean, well, our our big thing is, is chatting live, is, that, is having a live run horror hosted show the night of uh must see tv style you know yeah this is, this is but but it stays People, up the, so, the but... interaction is a lot of fun and yes. 
Um, the live part is what makes it fun. The replay, I mean, you could still watch the replay and I, th- and sure. I think enjoy it, but you wouldn't be able to see like all the comments. Right. And it's like telling somebody about a party you went to the night before. Yeah. You yeah. should, uh, you know, it's better if you're there. I mean, it's cool to hear about it, but man, if you were there, we had a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> yeah. Hey, I went to the Playboy Mansion last night. You should have been there. Yeah, I should have been. I mean, we want that kind of thing, you know. <laughs> we also had someone send us um, music. They were like... Oh, I'm trying to remember the name. Well, I'll, I'll have to look it up later. But someone said, hey, my 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 relative is a musician. Here's a list of their music. Yeah. And you can use it if you want. Well, it was like, wow, okay, thanks. But I'll, I'm going to have to research that. It depends if it's tracked on, uh, you know, on, on whatever. And it was at uh, uh, YouTube. ASCAP, you know, or whoever they publish their, yes. their music. If they even publish. If they didn't publish it and it's not anything or not copywritten, then... You could use it all day, but if it's out there for the bots to find. Right. And even if an artist says, oh, yeah, you can use my music, it could still give you a copyright ding on YouTube. Well, that's with the Midnight, Midnight Syndicate. I mean, they were they are the most generous, mu- most talented, generous musicians ever. Oh, yeah. They're super nice. They let mostly anybody that wants to use their music use it. And they mm-hmm. have. And it's great horror thing oh it's stuff. great like haunted house background music it's beautifully done and different di- and different styles and stuff like that it's not you know they have multiple cds t- hundreds of tracks but they, they get... were even doing music for um um cedar points hollow weekends yeah and that's a, a amusement park here in sandusky ohio um for those of you who don't know but but the problem with that is their stuff's published and it can get it gets stained yeah so yeah, it, they let us use it, but but it gets a copyright ding. So I don't even know how you you have to. What do you have to do? You have to. Um... So when we get um like a music ding, if if we make a mistake and get something like that on YouTube, they give you options now where you can mute the music, you can cut out that segment completely from your video, or you can replace the music with you with music that YouTube provides that's copyright free. So on some episodes, I had to <laughs> replace it with um, something else. Uh, yeah. And, so, it, you know, it, you have to wait forever for it to process and everything. Uh, but it makes it right. It gets rid of that. And then that way, later on, if you wanted to, you could, if you're eligible for monetization, you can put ads on the video. Yeah. So that's all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I mean, you know, uh, we're, we're we're continually continually trying to figure out how to differentiate our show from you know from other other horror hosted shows. Um, you know, is it a format thing? Is it a content thing? Is it a combination of it? Who knows? Some, you know, to me, the last people, the last crew that made anything different was the Mystery Science Theater guys. I mean, that really took hosting movies to a whole different level. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, dang, why couldn't I, I thought it's like one of those moments. I'm you know? sure you and everyone else thought of what well, dang, why didn't I think of that? I mean, <laughs> but, or, or what, what else can you do? That's that has that same impact. You know what I mean? What else can someone could someone come up with that can make someone go, dang, why didn't I think of that? You know, well, something else that we do with the Harry Scary Hangover, we talk about different topics. Yeah. Um, we, we talk about different movies, books, comic books, props, well, I haunted love... stuff. I mean, we talk about all different topics. So then, then you're more than just someone hosting a movie. Right. Then you're a character that's chatting and maybe reviewing products yeah. or, or talking about different topics with your fans. Yeah, and, I, and that was inspired by the Howard Stern show, their, um, their, uh, their, what do you call that? Their Sirius XM show, because they were doing a thing. They do the, their normal show, the the talk show, and then Howard wouldn't do it. But after that, they would have the um, the uh, the after show, the um, whatever they call it, the Howard Stern after, and it would be um, you know the Gary, the producer, and other people, and they would comment. They would basically down talk about the show itself, the wrap up. Mm-hmm. It was a wrap up show. It was called a wrap up show. Now I remember, but. Uh, so you even have more of the show that, you know, on the show that you just watch and some of the behind the scenes stuff, you know, that they worked on or would they have some of the people that were in that would hang around afterwards and they would just talk and, you know, shoot the shit and <laughs> talk about stuff. And, you know, so that, that's what we kind of do with the hangover is that it's a sort of like the after show, the after party the, type of thing. Yeah, just like an after party chat show. Yeah, more we, of us. It, it's our characters and we just talk about different topics and, and just kind of roll with it. 
and people will like blurt out all kinds of funny things and yeah but it's it's just more of us on a different platform and uh, and i always equate it to switching like on the old tvs you switch from the vhf to the uhf you know channels and you know find us there too but yeah it um it's it's it, it, it just always is interesting and a challenge and we don't want to burn out. We're trying to figure out new ways to, to, to entertain you all out there. And if not new ways, ways that are fun. Yeah. And it is it's it is a labor of love, but we also put a lot of time and effort into it. So we do, we are grateful for like our Teespring t-shirt sales mm-hmm. when we get an eBay sale, when people uh, tip us during the live chat where they do the super chats. Yeah. Uh, it does help go towards like, all the stuff, all the expenses of running the show. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it, there's no shame in that game. It's it's so, not unlike Spengulia or, or Elvira. Yes. There, there are Sp- characters. Mm-hmm. They, they get, you know, TV contracts and they get compensated for their time and efforts. Yeah. I mean, it, you're not going to have a plumber come over and fix your sink and then you're not going to pay them. I mean, hey. if, if you're entertained, uh, you pay know, me. the no. entertainer. Well, should get you know a little something out of it well yeah well i mean provide a service and then you know we, we, what needs to be done is we need to build you know like i said it's a uh we, we provide the entertainment like bands i mean bands have music the industry has changed so much before the old uh the old model was hey you get a band together uh you get picked up by a record producer or a record company they fund your album and pay for your tour and you wind up paying them back with the proceeds from said album and tour. Well, now with the MP3 stuff and then and the digital fi- bands don't make a lot of money off of record sales anymore. They make money off of the tours and the merchandise, well, the ticket sales for the live stuff. Yeah, things. now I'm seeing bands putting whole albums on YouTube for free. They'll well, technically kind of for free, but they get the ad revenue from it. Ah. And then they'll have links to their website or their store. Boom. And yeah, merchandise. It, merchandise and appearances is where they're going to make their money because now everyone's like, well, I could just listen to it online for free. Well, I didn't even think about that. That's a, that, well, But if, if you put the wow. whole album out there Jeez. and you have it set up for monetization, <laughs> technically you can get ad revenue. Whether or not it's a lot is another thing. It depends on how many views it's... you get, what your following is. That's a wow! But I you might get a few pennies here and there from ad revenue. Yeah, but if you have a million, like you know, there are, there are some songs out there I see that are in like that, like the weekend. You know, what oh. the hell is that song? That uh, duh, blinding lights. That's weekend. That's probably I know, but the, the name weekend. of the song is Blinding Lights. Mm-hmm. That particular song, it's got to be in the billions of views. Millions, I think. Uh, He's got a YouTube. Yeah, you should check it out. But if if it's you know even in the, it's got to be in the hundreds of millions of views. I I don't know song. about that. I, I I don't know every spec on well even if them. The, but yeah, and you, yeah, I, I mean yeah, if if you have a big enough following. Well, yeah. that and that's when the, the I mean that's a lot of dough rolling in you know mm-hmm. uh, from from ad revenue. I didn't even think about that. So yeah, yeah ad so, revenue. So that's the thing. I mean, so that, and that's how all the content creators obviously on on YouTube make their money. Is they have popular videos, and the more eyes on it, the more you know, the more likes or, or the more views they get, the more they can potentially make from the, yeah. the AdSense. There are know. some people who are full time YouTubers. Sure, they make you like know. the the people we mentioned earlier. So you know, we're just gonna you know we're gonna keep at it and keep doing what we enjoy, and um, we're not sure if we're gonna do a show this Friday, mm. unfortunately. But we will be back next Friday for sure, and we'll make an announcement on our social media, um, probably in the next day or two. Yeah, uh, you know, some some stuff we just have to take care of. That's all. We're yeah. all okay. It's just we just you know life happens. We got to take care of some things. Yeah, the weekend blinding lights official official audio audio four hundred ninety three million. million official video. It's 426 million so yeah that's a lot of yeah and, and look at this this is the blind lights the weekend i don't even know this is just the lyric someone posted got 72 million views so some idiot out there just posted the lyrics and got yeah 72 but million. That's the ad fit. revenue is probably going to the artist Maybe. and not the youtuber it might be i have you know because knows? of copyright that would be nice if you could but i don't you never know i mean some people do, obviously. And do then, if he's on whatever record label they're on, the that, record label gets a chunk of that. That's just amazing. So that's how it works now. If you're an independent musician and yeah. aren't assigned to a record label, you would get all the monies. That's so really it, again. It, it comes down to being independent, you know, uh, creator, 
how can you understand what you're working in, the field you work in, how do you make it work for you? Mm-hmm. Um, you don't rely on a record company to, to pay you anymore or a, or a TV station or a movie uh, house to give you a contract. You but, could. But if it's a, a good of... enough deal and sure. it looks like it what has been good enough for yeah. some people where they sign yeah. on. But it's not the only way. It all way. depends on what works for that person. But at one time, that was pretty much the only way. Unless yeah. you wanted to work small stages and get paid, you know, by the bar person or whatever. The, you know, right. There, there's many. There's there's different um, yeah. different possibilities now. It's crazy. But uh, I think we should probably wrap up the podcast. We can wrap it up, yes. Um, and the only thing I was going to add is a, a little bit of a, a, a adjunct or a, a footnote to a subject that we talked about last week about um, you know the, the sort of the feuds and the thing and then sort of the drama, the drama that goes on sometimes with, with Un, specific, unprovoked, with the, unwanted drama with the horror hosted community in, in, in general. Is that the only the people that really suffer are the fans because. That's what that's what's weird to me is that you'll see the stuff go back and forth, and we know, you know the stuff we've been through, and other people have been through with other people, and then but you look at their friends list, it's all the same people that like us and like them because it's all the same taste. And, and they, I know right, that. and I know that. But the thing is, is that they don't know all this stuff's going on. Yeah, and then so then they see that, and then it's like they're like they feel like they're caught in the middle, and it's like mommy and daddy are fighting. Yeah, and it's it, it, that's that's why I feel bad about because. You know, that, that dawned on me after we had that conversation. I'm like, well, that's the, it doesn't bother me so much, all the stuff that's going on, that it has gone on with the prospective uh, people. But it's the, the, the people in the middle that don't know. Because it's the same reaction I had when I learned about other, uh, like, stuff in the business before we even started doing this. I'm like, that person didn't like this person? What happened? Yeah, because you know, then like, you hear, well, so-and-so did that to that person. And you're like, what? And I like both of them. Now I don't know what to think. You know, but so. I'm fans of all of this. Yeah. So can don't we make all, me choose. Yeah, just let's all just get along and yeah, and you know, and you know, if you don't like someone, don't like them and just leave it alone. You don't have to, you know, drag their name through the mud or, or accuse them of things that they may or may not have said without any proof. So I think that's just the best thing to do is to just like you know, concentrate on what you're doing, make the best product you can, and we'll do the same. How about that? All just, right, just focus on taking care of yourself and not yeah, not not what other people are. The he said, she said is so terrible. We're done with that. So. so we're all done with that. I just wanted to wrap it up with that. But anyway, so thanks for listening to another fun program, question mark. Hopefully you enjoyed <laughs> your, 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 your time here. Listen to us on a Living the Scream. And we'll see you next Monday night. Or you'll, you'll hear us next Monday night. Yeah, and just uh, follow us online for updates regarding future shows. Thank you guys so much. Good night. Good fright. Mwah! See you later, alligators. Ha, ha, ha.